Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome. Just to begin, a couple of housekeeping points. We have French interpretation available. To listen in your preferred language, please click on the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and select the language you wish to hear. Bonjour, nous disposons des services d'interprétation en français. Pour écouter ce webinaire de la langue de votre choix, cliquez sur le, le bouton interprétation en bas de votre écran. Sélectionnez ensuite la langue que vous souhaitez entendre. So to begin, um, I will hand over to our research officer for experimental research, Delphina, who will introduce the session. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jenny. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Good afternoon, I believe, for most of you. Um, we are joining together today uh, for a question and answer session on our expression of interest for the last call that we have launched at PEP, the Strengthening Impact Evaluation Capacities for Development in East and West Africa. And for this session, we have um, our research director for the Pieri Group, the Experimental Research Group at PEP, Dr. Maria Laura Alsua, who will be leading the session and answering your questions. Um, so over to you, Maria Laura. Hi, hello everyone, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, now. yeah, apologies. So thank you, Delfina, and thank you, Shani. Welcome everyone to the section. We are going to go over uh, the main objectives of this new uh, initiative from, from PEP. Uh, from the chat, I see many of your, of your uh, names and some of them sound familiar, but uh, I assume I, I see some names that are new to PEP, so I'm going to go quickly over what uh, PEP uh, means and what we do uh, in, in developing countries. And then I will explain quickly this call and then we'll open the, the, the floor for Q and A's. So for those of you who are not familiar with PEP, uh, PEP uh, stands for Partnership for Economic Poli uh, Policy. And we are a global organization that is devoted to build local research capacities to inform development in the global South. As you can see in the map, we have over we have financed over 350 projects in 64 countries, 40% uh, in low-income countries or in fragile contexts, and then we have a uh, train more than a thousand, um, as to be precise, a thousand and uh, 150 uh, local researchers, uh, and half of them are women. We are uh, located in our headquarters are located in Nairobi, but we are a global organization. So that means that we have our research directors and, and resource person and communication uh, department is located in, in different uh, countries. Uh, what we believe uh, truly that development challenges require locally devised solutions. So our mission is really to promote a southern driven development, empowering uh, local researchers. And our vision is a world that uh, can, each country can generate the local evidence and expertise that they need to make decisions about its own future. So what we do basically is we, we provide, we, we launch call for proposals where we uh, fund local researchers working together with local government officers and we provide two sorts of, uh, sort of, sort of mentorship. One is scientific and the other is policy outreach. And uh, this is how we work with impact evaluation. You can go into PEP webpage. We do many more things that in, uh, besides impact evaluation. Um, but this call specific for uh, impact evaluation com uh, comprising randomized control trials. Um, and we want to achieve uh, a 
greater degree of autonomy for local researchers. On, at the same time, generate strong demand for impact evaluation within governments, and also to have high academic standards in terms of journal publication. This is something that is important because it gives more voice to uh, local researchers based in, in the global south. So uh, I'm more than happy to, to if you have specific questions uh, about uh, PEP, I can answer at the end of the presentation, but uh, if not, you can go into the web page and, and learn a lot more about what PEP does. Uh, now I'm going to focus on this specific call that was launched a few days ago. Uh, and since this is a very important endeavor for PEP, we are going to be working with this uh, grant that is uh, provided by Hewlett and William and Hewlett Flora Foundation. Uh, William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, apologies. Um, and it has very specific objectives and uh, it's called CED, the Strengthening Impact Evaluation Capacities for Development in East and West Africa. And as I said before, there are two main goals. The first is we want local researchers to uh, be able to run a randomized control trial impact evaluations in an autonomous manner. So we are going to mentor uh, researchers with some ex past experience or knowledge about RCTs, but the, ob the end objective is that you can, next time that is funding around, you can apply on your own and you can conduct an impact evaluation with a very high economic academic standards. And then the second goal is uh, develop the capacity of government to be, uh, to, to increase demand for impact evaluation and also use impact evaluation for policy making. As you may know, and this, I mean, I, I'm based in Latin America and we have sort of the same problem. Sometimes the demand for impact evaluation comes from uh, multilateral institutions or donors, but it's something that is not designed to help government to make uh, and answer questions that they have uh, in their policy, in the, in the, in the definition or in the uh, introduction of a public policy. So uh, we want, as a result of this grant, to uh, improve the capacity of government to be also an important part of, uh, uh, of the, the different bodies that demand impact evaluations. So as you may have read in the call, the basic facts, facts is that we are going to uh, ask you to, uh, to, to prepare an expression of interest. And I'm going to go over some, some issues that are uh, important for us. So uh, we are going to ask that the teams are composed by government officers and senior local researchers. Uh, and also that they will carry out a randomized control trial of their program of choice. It can be something that is a pilot. It can be something that has been done in the past, but you have new cohorts and you never did an impact evaluation. But the output, uh, we need some academic output as a result too. So besides all the information that they, this uh, project may bring to the policymakers, we need uh, also an academic paper as a result of this evaluation. What the teams will receive is ongoing support and training from PEP mentors on randomized control trials, impact evaluation, research, and policy engagement. And the total uh, project is like it, what specific, uh, specifically um, 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 allow, uh, allow it to the teams is uh, $74,000. That is a research grant plus data collection grant. On top of that, PEP. This depend, will depend on the evolution of COVID. Um, we'll uh, also conduct uh, annual general meetings and study visits and field visits to uh, paid by PEP to help the teams to, um, to conduct the, the research. So what are our requirements? Well, from the government team, we need a senior government official that has some authority for program implementation because we are going to ask you for some sort of commitment to implement the policy that we discussed or that you, you want to evaluate. And then we, are, we have two government officers that are willing to undergo training. 
uh, the members should be East or West African nationals and reside in the country during the course of the project. So this will not apply for PhD students who are like spending or doing their PhD abroad. And of course, we can train more government officers if, if, they are, if there is more interest that they participate from this uh, training. And then we have the research team. And in the research team, we have we, one senior researcher that has proven experience in randomized control trials in different capacities. It could be that it was part of a previous team uh, or that they participated actively in uh, the evaluation design, writing of the paper, data collection, but you, you have to prove that you have some experience in, in the past. One co-researchers and two assistant researchers or two research assistants um, the requirements is that uh, the government has to, or the, the implementing agency, to be more precise, must be willing to uh, commit to conduct a randomized control trial. So this is a, this is a like one of the main restrictions. If this is not happening, then we cannot provide the funds because the funds are only for randomized control trials. And then a, a commitment to training. So the government team members must be willing to undergo training on RCTs and effective policy engagement to help install these capacities to demand impact evaluations in the future. So we have, this has two steps. The first step is that you have to submit a, an expression of interest by November 12th. The, the expression of interest, the call has been circulated and is available in, in the webpage. We have a template uh, where you can uh, propose a program to evaluate. As I said, it could be a new program, it could be a pilot program, it could be something that uh, uh, you uh, probably had in the past but had no evaluation and you want to look at a new cohort. Uh, and this is a timeline. It has to start in March 2022. We hope, I mean, the program we need to start uh, um, with the um, submission process before, so that's why we are launching it now, and it has to be finished by May 2024. And the team composition has two, two parts. One is the government sub-team and the research sub-team, that is what I explained in the previous slide. So to what we consider a complete application, and this is, uh, this is important that you go through all these uh, checklists because uh, incomplete applications are not processed. So probably you, you, if you spend a lot of time writing the expression of interest, but you don't go through this application checklist, uh, the, unfortunately we cannot process your proposal. So this is a, 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 a big uh, disgrace that you spend a lot of time working and you are not uh, being able to even be considered uh, and uh, your proposal is not even going to be evaluated. So you need to register on the PEP website. You need to complete your profiles with CVs on the individual PEP intranet account. So this means, and, and I, I am, this would, has been problematic in the past, each member that appears on the team has to do this. Now, we, probably the mem some members are not willing to do this, well, they have to assign a member that creates a, a, a login credentials and uh, uploads the, the CVs. Then uh, we have to complete and submit the applic applicant eligibility form, uh, upload the expression of interest template in the PEP intranet and upload the letter of commitment from the relevant government office on the PEP intranet that has to commit specifically to random assignment of the evaluation of your choice. So uh, this is, basically the, the things that we are going to, to be evaluating in the, in the expression of interest. If the expression of interest passed the, the first filter, then you'll be asked to submit a, a full proposal. And for the full proposal, uh, we'll probably have a, a new Q&A session and, uh, and more uh, information upcoming for the selected um, teams. We don't have many, uh, many proposals to, to fund, so this is highly competitive. In the past, we have like one out of 10 uh, expression of interest, no, more, less. I, I would say like of the final proposals, like a quarter are, get fund, funds, but this will depend a lot on, on, the, on the quality. 
So uh, I'm, I'm going to stop here for uh, questions. In case you, you, you have specific questions, please, uh, you can type them in the, in the chat. So thank you. And we are available for questions. Marilaura, we do have some questions in the questions and answers box. Maybe yeah. we can go through them. Yeah. So the first one, uh, I know that this opportunity is restricted to RCTs. Is there a room for evaluating ongoing interventions using pseudo experimental designs? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. This is what I said in the presentation. We, we can only fund RCTs. Um, and um, we, we can only fund uh, RCTs. I don't know why my camera is not showing, but I'm sorry about it. Um, what you can do is, if you have an ongoing intervention that is uh, in, um, uh, being to be uh, implemented with a new cohort, you can do a random assignment there, but this is specifically for RCTs. So unfortunately, um, all the other designs are excluded. So we have more okay. questions here. Oh. Do you want to read them, Delfina? Yeah, um, we have a few short questions and then we go into a long one. Can a government official also serve as a researcher? Well, we have this in the past. I mean, the, the government officer could serve as a researcher, but they have to have clear research uh, credentials and they have to have the time to devote to research. This, uh, this endeavor takes a lot of, take a lot of time. Uh, so uh, it's important that if you are going to have a researcher in the government, it needs to be, uh, it, needs to, it needs to show us that they, they can commit the time they need to, uh, to complete the, 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 the tasks that are needed to carry out the impact evaluation. Right. Um, for this specific call, can a principal researcher submit two different project proposals in two different teams? Well, uh, in principle, you can, we don't exclude that, but the thing is that we are, it's going to be complicated to, to be engaged in, in this sort of activity in, in two different teams. Uh, we really want uh, researchers to, have to, to be able to devote the time that an impact evaluation needs. So I would uh, ask you to probably see if the, the, the two proposals are of, of good quality, you can submit them, but uh, there's no guarantee that we'll fund any of them, but we'll certainly, it will be very hard for us to fund both of them. So uh, I advise you to think um, clearly which one is, is, is better. Right. Should the proposal only be focused on RCTs? I believe we already covered that. Yeah. Yes, it's only for RCTs. Um, similar questions. Can we evaluate the impact of a policy strategy as a whole, or it has to be a program or project? Well, I mean, uh, this generally RCTs are specifically designed to evaluate the program or, or project, like the policy strategy as a whole is more difficult. This depends on, on the program, but usually uh, RCTs focus on, on a specific um, uh, program. Right. Um, what should be entailed in the letter of commitment? And should letter that letter of commitment, of commitment be uploaded individually or as a group? We do have a template for that. There's a template for that. Uh, the letter of commitment needs to have the government commitment to evaluate the program using random assignment. Then you'll sign other letters if you are awarded the, the, the the, the grant where you commit to training and some other and policy engagement and some other activities, but we cannot process expression of interest if you don't have a letter from the government with a template that we provide committing to random assignment of a specific uh, policy program within the, the time frame that we provide uh, in our call. Great. 
um, one that's very popular, how many proposals will be founded in Dublin? Well, I, I don't know really because we have, a, I mean, I would say something between like four and six, depending on, on, the, on, the, on the funds that we can get also from other sources. Right now we have uh, money to fund very little, but we hope to, to be able to fund some more or to rechannel your proposals into people that may be interested in funding. But uh, we never find fund more than five or six at a time. The, the call that we are finishing now has uh, six uh, projects. Great. Um. Can expatriate staff be principal researcher of research team uh, who is serving long time to the institution and also commits to be there for the full project period? If they are expatriates, can they still serve? Well, will depend. I mean, if they have to be there for the full project, and this means be there for the full project. So uh, this will be analyzed on a case by case. We generally don't do that, but if, if the person is there for the whole project, then we can reconsider. But in general, we want people who are based in the country and I'm going to stay in the country because if the, the, when the project finishes, if the expat goes back to their country, to its country, to this or her country, uh, then uh, the capacity will not be installed locally. And we want to really get autonomous research living in the countries where we are funding the proposal. So uh, you can submit the, the expression of interest, but uh, it will not give a, be given priority. Okay, and in the same question, is it compulsory that research that the research principal investigator be in the PhD has a PhD in economics or statistics, or will an experienced person in the, in, for example, in the health field with a PhD uh, with publications on RCTs can serve uh, as a PI for this call? Yeah, it can serve as a PI as long as it, the experience is proved and it has a record of publications in health that are RCTs. And we are not, uh, the RCTs are like, if, if you want to do a health project, it has to be related to a social problem or like an intervention that has, we are not funding research on drugs or anything similar to that. Like to give you an example of a, of a health project is, okay, how do we increase, uh, I don't know, uh, clinic visits uh, for pregnant women, these sort of projects, but not uh, using uh, drugs. Perfect. And finally, um, will the funds be transferred to the institute or what is the mechanism? Maybe we want well, to clarify a bit more on that. Well, this varies from country to country. Usually, we, if they, some governments are very restrictive in the type of funds that they can receive. So in this case, we need an institution. We need an institution to be able to transfer the money. Um, and then we have one that's, that's also very popular. If an RCD is in country X, only country X nationals residing in country X are eligible, or can you have someone from another country conduct the experiment for this call? Well, it depends on the country. If the country is, if the researcher lives in, in a country that is not eligible, no, we cannot finance. You can, I mean, I would not suggest that you, we evaluate the quality of the team. And if the team is, don't have, if the, if the members of the team are not based in the, in the local country where the uh, impact evaluation is going to be conducted, then the answer is no. If you have a team member that is in, 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 in a country that is in the, in the call, then we can consider it. Um, is it okay to work with subnational government officers or local offices rather than at the national level? No problem at all. We, we, I mean, the, what we need is a commitment of, of the government office. It could be national or subnational. This is not a problem. Perfect. Can a PhD student allow to participate as a principal researcher? Well, you need to have proven experience in RCT. So if you can, I mean, if a PhD student, uh, we have done our PhD. So if you started yesterday, then know if you are working towards the end of your dissertation, you can still apply. Um, but as I said, we evaluate the quality of the, of, the, of the team. So we prefer people who are like at least established in their career. So a PhD student may be uh, too young for, for this type of grants. We have some uh, grants in the past who are like for starting uh, researchers. This is really to get research autonomy. Great. Um, 
uh, another question that has has been uh, has repeated a lot is repeated a lot. Uh, you indicated that the program should be willing to assign randomly the participants to treatment and control groups. What about the case where the policy intervention is it is already ongoing? Well, as I and what said, about the cases where policy decisions affect an entire sector and randomization is not possible? Well, if randomization is not possible, then we cannot finance the, the proposal through this call, I'm afraid. I mean, the call is for randomized control trials. If, if the, the policy has already started, but you have a new cohort that you can evaluate uh, uh, by random assignment, then this is accepted. Um, let me... And this another one that's very popular. Is there a specific domain or theme where we would prefer the evaluations that we would prefer the, the evaluations to address? Can we you froze the theme? I'm sorry, can we repeat the question? Yes. Is there a, a particular theme about which uh, we would the like theme, the RCTs to be conducted? We don't encourage any particular theme in principle because we want really this to respond to policy needs. So if you want to, let's say uh, to improve, to implement a new educational policy that is uh, of the interest of the government, and this makes sense for the government, then we want you to do the, the evaluation on that. And this was like very, in, in the past, some donors were like uh, more interested on, on themes, but uh, the last uh, round of funding that we have, uh, the Schuller Foundation was very open really to, to, to learn what the governments wanted to do uh, so we don't did not encourage any, anything that being said uh, they are um, interested in some sort of a gender analysis of, of things so if the proposal has a strong gender component then uh, it is of their interest but uh, we are going to rank the proposals uh, disregarding the theme uh, so if there is something that is uh, the, the gender focus is like something that is very important for the project and the project is good, uh, will 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 be open to to receive proposals with some sort of gender analysis. Um, right. Another question, also very popular. Uh, is it acceptable to conduct an RCT for a project that is funded? Uh, by an NGO rather than a government? Well, but you still have, we need to look at this uh, case by case. We prefer like, we still need governments. We are favoring governments and the, the project is for governments. So we, we don't, uh, as I said, we are going to rank them. Uh, so an NGO will not uh, have the same weight uh, than a government. But if the NGO, like there are some uh, institutions that work with governments, that the governments are implementing their programs or they're working together, then uh, you still need to have some government uh, officials on board. Great. Um, again, many questions about whether experience is, is needed for experience in RCTs is needed, is needed to be a principal investigator. Yeah, some knowledge of RCTs are needed because, as I said at the beginning, this grant wants to really boost uh, some researchers that have worked in the past in, in some RCTs to a level of uh, more autonomy. Uh, so that the next project that is funded, you can conduct without any mentoring or without any external help. So for that, we cannot start building capacities from, from, from scratch. Okay, what kind of institution do you need to transfer the funds? Again, this is related to the role of the government. Government or universities, we, we cannot transfer to uh, individuals. But we are flexible because different countries have different uh, uh, problems and, and, and it's, more easy, it's more difficult sometimes in, in countries transferring to the government or to universities. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, a long question that I'm reading here about the the, the organization that is headquartered in the U.S. Um, well, uh, the funds. This I need to check with our uh, department. Uh, the but the the office is the local office that is going to receive the the funds, not the the U.S. office. 
And uh, secondly, they need to be engaged. As I, we prefer that they are engaged with the government. So it's important that, uh, that the government is present there. Right. Um, how long should the studies last? What is the timeline of the program or how many years of observation do you expect from baseline to end line? Well, we need to finish by, uh, it has for like a three year framework since it starts and, and at the beginning. So uh, you need to be done by, by with data collection and the, your working paper written when the grant finishes. And the grant starts now and it's a three year grant. We have yeah, a so basically, calendar. Uh, you will find a digital calendar in, in the web page and then the information uh, to complete the, the expression of interest. But basically, the project needs to be launched on March 2022 and it's going to have to finish, be finished by May 2024. And that needs to leave some room for the final working paper to be written and the results and the analysis to be processed. So it's roughly a, little, a bit less than two years for the intervention. Um, let me see, we have many questions. It's nice to see everyone's interested. Can we propose assistant researchers as PhD students? Yeah, of, no problem, yeah. The, there's a, I mean, I'm not, we are not discussing that this now because this is a very early stage, but one thing that is important from uh, research teams to, to understand is uh, that an RCT has a big team. There are a lot of people included in the team. And the academic research output is a part of the whole process. So when you think about the team composition, you need to come up with different uh, uh, tasks for different people. So probably the research assistant will have a role that will not lead to the, the main author of the research publication in a case. So we really need also to consider the team in, in terms of uh, assignment of responsibilities and duties for, for each of the teams. So the research assistant could be people that are starting their research career and, um, and, and will be willing to execute diverse functions of, of, the, of, of the project, not necessarily the academic writing. Right. Um... One question that appeared a lot, we have answered it for the role of, uh, of principal investigator, but can a research team member appear in two different teams, two different proposals? Uh, yeah, but the problem is that we, those are, we, we have worked with these things and we, you are, this is not going to be your full-time job. Uh, and um, we, we are not going to, we are going to rank the proposals uh, by quality. So unless you have two very good proposals, I suggest that you focus in the first one, in the better one, so in the best one, and, and don't, uh, don't, we are not going to fund two person, the same person in two different uh, teams. They can, they can submit, but we, we yeah. simply won't. Just one the indirect post ceiling, no, we don't have a, an indirect post ceiling. We look at the budget, there is no limit, but you have to provide a budget that will go uh, and we analyze to, to that it seems uh, uh, reasonable. And then we have a, another question uh, on, on that topic. If the funds are channeled through an institution, is an administrative charge or overhead cost allowed? Yes. Not sure, did you? Yeah, yeah, it's allowed. It is allowed, perfect. Um, is it possible to have four, I would think, more than four people in the government team? I mean, for the people, people in the government team, we, we have uh, the requirement that we put in the presentation. You can, I mean, we, we are open to have more people if they are willing to participate from the training. But the task of each government team is going to be 
uh, require and analyze. You can submit more people, but we are we 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 have the 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 right to say, okay, we don't see that all these people are going to be involved, so you have to change this if if the project is to be funded. Okay, we have also many questions on what qualifies as experience um, for, on RCTs, so that. Uh, a person can fill the role of, of a principal researcher for the project. And what we, maybe Maria Laura, let, let me know if you want to jump in, but basically we need uh, one, we need the, the principal investigator to have, to reference one publication of an RCT where you have participated as a lead researcher, co-researcher or junior researcher, but that is a prove, proven experience with RCTs, with RCTs and no other Your methodology. Or working paper. It could be a working paper or an ongoing project that is like advanced. But you need to show us that you need the basics and that you have been involved uh, in, in in the in the in the different stages of an RCT. Okay. Um, I think we're we're okay uh, with the time. So we have we have time for a few more. We have lots of questions. So sorry if we have a hard time catching up. Um, should the research team come from a university or can they come from independent nonprofit organizations? If they can come from nonprofit organization, no problem. Mm, let me check. What Possible areas are open for evaluation to guide one in the proposal development. The areas, I mean, whatever is important and is relevant for the policy making in this country. Right, and we have a few more here in French. Um, can, can teams be formed between two countries? For example, a project that covers several countries. Yes, no problem. But however, we have like we have the budget is what I presented. So you have to make uh, I prove that you have budget to to uh, to conduct the, the project in, in more than one country, and that you that the, the countries are all eligible. Okay. The, the eligibility well, criteria is in the in the poll. Yes. Uh, when it is a purely research project, what is the exact role of the government agents? We don't have pure research project here. It has to be the, uh, 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 something that is important for the government. Okay. Uh, must the team be 50% women and 50% men? Yeah, overall, yeah. Yes, I think we have, for the research team, we require 50-50% and for the government team, which is only, only made up by, by three people, we require at least one woman. Um, then, is there an age requirement for this for example, member, team members under a certain age cutoff? No, we don't have any age requirement. Um, can you give us a profile of the principal investigator in relation to his experience on RCTs? Well, I think we cover that, that they have to show that they understand what an RCT means and, and that they have been involved in the implementation of one. Just having taken a training some years ago doesn't count. They have to be able to show that they did data collection, uh, etc. Exactly. Uh, hands-on experience uh, that ended up in a working paper at least. Yeah, a working paper or a promised publication that is, I mean, if it's finishing and you still don't have the working paper, but you have, you should be able to convey that you have experience in, in that. Can a scholar who is outside of Africa be a member of a team? No. No, no we cover that. that. Let me check. We have questions about the funds. Uh, you can find that information online, but as we said before, uh, this project will entail a grant of seventy-four thousand uh, dollars with a fifty percent uh, with a fifty thousand dollars component for data collection. Am I correct? 
um, let me check. Yes, $50,000 for data collection and a core research grant of $24,000. And let me see whether we have any questions that we have not covered yet. Please use the questions and answers box rather than the chat room. Um, there's a question here about whether, whether if it's possible to attend the ICT trainings if we if we are not awarded funded funding. Well, we have a, a program for training that is uh, run by Laval University that is award development. I don't remember the name exactly, but yet you can apply for that. That it it has some uh, RCT training too. So I think, let me see. Yeah, I, I see some more here. If this is a three-year project, will we be given a certificate at the end of the project? Well, the certificate of what, of training, or I mean, the, the, the project itself is like to, to evaluate the policy. So the, 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 the end the product is a publication and the policy being evaluated and some capacities created within the government but we, we don't have a certificate for a, univer a university certificate. We have one interesting here. Hello, could you organize trainings on randomized control trials in French? This would help us for the French speaking community. Um, we do have online trainings. Maria Laura. Yeah, we have, we have trainings in, in French yeah, online too. We have um, online courses. We can point you to the to the corresponding links, and these are bilingual, so you can take them in French. And, and our mentors, and our we question. have French speaking mentors once the project starts. Yes. Yeah, uh, since two groups are expected. To, sorry. No, Shane um, has since two groups are expected. The, Shane has posted now the link for the courses that we have in, in French and English. Oh, there, you can find them in the chat. Sorry. Uh, we have a question that is that has come up, but it's, it's interesting, interesting to go, go through it again. Since two groups are expected to work together, the government team and the research team, where will funds be channeled to? The government? Well, this depends. Yeah, this depends on the on. You can decide whether we, we are open to, to channel it through different uh, channels. What makes more, more sense to the, the team. Some, some countries have a lot of... Uh, a bureaucracy to channel the funds to the government. So this depends on, on, on each team preference. We don't have a, a restriction, but it has to be an institution. It could be the government or the, the, the research team, the research team, university or institute. But it, 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 we cannot transfer funds to individuals now for this call. Okay, and let me check if we are missing anything. Yeah, we, I, there's one here that says that we can, can we evaluate gray post electoral violence in Liberia? Well, the, the, you can evaluate whatever related to, pre, uh, to electoral violence in Liberia that can be channeled through an RCT. So if it's an, a program that will, uh, uh, with the objective of reducing viol, uh, pre electoral violence or, or like some, but it has to be an intervention. And uh, I think we have covered most of, of the questions here. Um, there's, maybe uh, there's one. Yeah, I see one remaining that says, can an ongoing RCT project submission be considered in this call? You, you have to, um, you have to, uh, the, the impact evaluation has to have a baseline, a midline and a, or a mid, not midline, not necessarily, and a follow up for our project. So uh, you have to add a, a component with, a, the, with the existing RCT or evaluate a new cohort that we need, like it cannot just come up to uh, provide funds for, for, for data collection only. 
Uh, we have some other questions there. Can I be the principal if I investigator if I have publications or experience in other impact evaluation techniques other than RCTs? Well, as I, we said a couple of times, you need experience in uh, hand, at least hands-on experience on an RCT. Um, there are some questions on, on what, what RCTs are, and maybe it's important that, that it, we have clarity on what they are and what they can fit us. A randomized uh, RCT stands for randomized control trial, and it means that the program that you want to evaluate is assigned uh, randomly to units or, or people that are going to participate. So you have for a while a control group that does not receive the program that is used as a, a, a proxy for the absence of the program. The RCT has to go through a, an ethics committee uh, that you can have it in your country, but we have one uh, in PEP too that will uh, see if the, the program uh, is uh, okay in terms of ethics requirement to be um, analyzed through a randomized control trial. We have, as Jenny pasted in the, in the webpage, the trainings that we have, and we provide some trainings on, on RCTs for you to know what this means. Great, and we have uh, a question about alternative roles. In addition to the team, is it possible to be senior advisor as an advisory board for this project? Well, you can have an advisory. Uh, an, uh, you can have an advisory board. No problem. Some countries have boards for the, 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 the government part. This is not a problem. And we have a question: um, Are uh, are people allowed to submit questions to a specific contact, um, or is this uh, going to be covered only by this session? No. If you have a very specific question, you can submit it to to us. We will be publishing anyway. Uh, maybe we can we can discuss that later. But we will be sharing a, a summary and, and the recordings of this of this session with the main questions that appear. If your question is not covered there, we might wanna we might be able to answer them. Not sure about specific proposals, right, Maria Laura? No, if you have probably, I mean, if you have a very specific question about team composition or like. The, the nature of the of the project, if it's like uh, when the RCT is going to be introduced, you can uh, uh, you can uh, reach uh, out to us, but we are not going to give you technical advice on the expression of interest development at this stage. Here we Basically, are. because we receive many many proposals and we cannot answer every one question. Then in, a, in the next stage, if you are if you are uh, um, selected to submit a, a full proposal. Uh, then we'll have some more uh, Q and A sessions that are more directed to specific problems because we won't have that many. Um, we have a, a question that's very relevant. Does PEP pay for the running intervention, intervention, such as a, a training, sensitization, etc.? Or well, the thing is that you, basically. The, the intervention is generally paid by the government. Um, so we, we, our funds are just for data collection. It could be the case that some part of the fund may cover some additional expense co caused by the RCT. Um, so some cases are used. Um, uh, some, in some cases, the funds was, were used for some specific components of, of, the, of the intervention. But basically, the, the funds are for data collection. Right. I think we have covered most of the most of the questions, most of the topics. Uh, maybe something that's worth mentioning is that many of the of the questions you ask and many of the of the information you you need, you can find it in the very template that you have to complete. In the expression of interest template, you will find information on on timelines, on the budget. So uh, we encourage you to, to take a look at the, at the template, even if you still have questions. If you take a look at the, the questions, you, you'll find many. Uh, if you take a look at the template, you'll find many answers to those questions. But in any case, we will, of course, be preparing a list of the, of the questions that, that 
were more, most popular here so that you can have answers. Um, we have a final question here. Are the trainings free, particularly for postdocs? The, we mean that uh, I don't know if the question refers to the trainings that we'll be providing in this um, uh, in this uh, call. Those are, are free, but not the the trainings that we have at Laval University. Those are are, are paid by it has to be paid. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a confusion. Um, one thing is that is this call where we will provide training and mentoring for the research team that is awarded the grant. And a different thing is, is a, are the online courses that we have in PEP that you can take a look at in the web page. So um, mentoring will only take place within the framework of the, of the grant. And, but the online courses are open for everyone. I hope that is clear. And uh, I think we have covered most of it. I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to mention. No, I think that that's all. Uh, we are really excited to be able to launch this call and we hope to get many expressions of interest that will result, result in, in full uh, proposals and, and, and hopefully uh, more researchers doing autonomous research in East and West Africa. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. We'll be, um, you can reach out to us, we'll be sharing contact information and we will be preparing um, a, a list of, of the most uh, frequent questions so that everyone can, can hide, have the information they need and you can reach out to us anyways. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye bye. Thank you to everyone for attending and thank you also to our interpreters. Thank you, Maria Laura and Delfina. Um, and we will be sharing the recording of the session on our YouTube and on the Google web page next week. So that's www.pet-net.com, uh, sorry, .org slash cool hyphen proposals. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.